um, I begin with this slide that um, states kind of quite clearly the territory we're in and that there's something to do with jewellery and a relationship to the body, although we don't necessarily know who this body is, but we have um, some clues. And I'm just going to run through some initial uh, pieces of mine from two, a few years back, early 2000s. Um, and I was trained as a contemporary jeweller. And I guess within these images, there are some clues to contemporary jewellery. And my uh, background as a New Zealand, as being my birth background is being a New Zealander. Um, and that in New Zealand practice, when I was beginning, they were very concerned with um, kind of identity and place. Uh, and using materials resourced often from what was collected. And they may have been uh, materials associated with um, kind of more traditional practices. Whereas when I came to Australia and began to study, that sort of didn't translate as readily. Uh, and when I graduated, I started to work with what I could find and um, Often it was in a fairly rough condition and I, I transformed it into brooches or um, wearable objects. And I suppose this is where the kind of contemporary jewellery part um, comes in and that is contemporary jewellery tends to have um, a, a kind of uh, dialogue with value, with preciousness. And it's, this is referred to as the critique of preciousness. And preciousness can be sort of amplified, like saturated, gold on gold on, and um, elaborative kind of making. Or um, it can be subverted, the, the precious material can be subverted. Or the not so precious material elevated are some of the variations for how that is, has played out in contemporary jewellery. So I work literally with what I would find, usually in my neighbourhood, and I would usually I call this a, a kind of surface archaeology. I'd be looking to for traces of of what was going on around me, and um, uh, using that to kind of talk about the place that I was living within. So it was kind of a place making practice, um, and then it also included making objects with um, with found elements within them. And text. Text is sort of also threaded through, whether it's found text or text that I'm working um, on the surface of, in this case, um, of the material. Um, and some of these <coughs> works, um, they all would have titles, like the bucket is called um, H2O. And um, the <laughs> bottle is um, the green bottle. And at that time, I was I was thinking, trying to kind of talk about um, you know resources and and what it's like to live at that time. We were in drought. And then uh, I've travelled and uh, kind of entertained a similar process, working with maps, um, train tickets and um, here an on light, uh, on, uh, what do you call them, the travel safety brochures that you get on flight. Um, so this bracelet was called For Your Safety. Um, oh, and I've put, these, <laughs> I've put these photos in as sort of pauses um, to, to shift gear, so to speak, but also to kind of indicate that um, I, I view jewellery as, uh, as something that is an, an adornment of um, both humans and otherwise. I'm, I'm fairly expansive in my kind of appreciation of where and how it happens. And so when my, um, I'm always, you know, I, I was, I did seem to maintain a studio practice, but it was always informed by walking and collecting material. 
And I began to have a sense that I wanted to actually make within the environment I was collecting and connect that to a, kind of a larger issue, if you like, than, than what was beyond the immediate range, that I, you know, the close immediate range of working in my location, but also with the body. And um, I developed this process where I would walk, collect, drill and seed um, fragments of plastic. And I called this seeding the cloud, and I was kind of correlating that the, the kind of massive kind of plastic residue kind of gathering in our gyres on the oceans with where it was beginning, which is in those fragments that get overlooked and dropped. And I started to pick them up and drill and thread and make kind of necklaces, if you like, of them that were also perhaps working as a way of mapping my work walks. Um, so each walk was sort of one of those loops. And um, uh, what else can I say about that? I uh, began to um, take friends along with me and then I developed that little instruction booklet and hosted walks. Um, in various different cities. I think there we've got Auckland, two in Auckland and one in Sydney, but I also hosted them in Adelaide. Um, oh, now I'm kind of, you know, you have to think on the spot, but there are a fair few places <coughs> I did. And um, where people came along with me and made their own necklace. And uh, then uh, I... I either invited them to take their friends to do the process or I um, uh, put, the, put the information up online and invited others to host events based on that information. And so then it happened in Hong Kong, uh, Iran in the middle. I had a woman who was um, uh, on, on some kind of overseas adventure. She did it there. And in Canberra, there were uh, hosted walks. And I think since then, we've been in Dunedin, in Auckland, and the UK, that other uh, iterations have occurred. And so I really, uh, what I like about this process is not only that it kind of distributes, but with each iteration, it also kind of, it changes, and there's possible sort of modifications that are made and that in, in that process, I'm learning something new about the process, as are others. And what the feedback was that it, it, um, it compelled them to look a different way, uh, both at the kind of material resource of plastic that they previously overlooked, but also of the kind of environment they were in. And this was something that I had been experiencing for some time in my work, that this compulsion first to collect, but also that it, it gave me a sort of a, a different way to um, kind of consider and contemplate a relationship to where I, where I was living and what I was doing. Um, so here's another pause. Um, I collect these sort of odd things about jewellery and here... Uh, it seems like jewellery is an agent. It's, it's saving them from a car wreck um, or Taylor, Taylor's, these teams at Taylor Swift's concert. And um, I started to think about this compulsion of material leading, you know, leading me along, um, kind of leading this walk. It wasn't just me who was instigating this walk. The material also propelled these walks. And... I found myself uh, in um, Barcelona and I wasn't lost. Um, I'd actually done my, I had a residency there. I, I kind of knew the place relatively well, but some years later was visiting and uh, my friend kind of threw me out onto the street and I was just disoriented and, and I began to walk and, and start that process of kind of looking and thinking about material and and that sort of settled me into something that I was familiar with. And, but I noticed that um, the angle of the sun, I think, was, was at a particular 
kind of length and that um, if I aligned my smartphone, my, you know, my modern day accessory, I could uh, affect a kind of ornamentation of my shadow. So this is a photograph taken through my smartphone. And I call this technique brooch broaching. It's kind of like uh, I, I relinquish part of myself, my material self, and, and the brooch kind of relinquishes part of its material self and we meet in this kind of middle ground. And, um, and instead of applying it kind of directly to my body, I'm kind of moving my body towards it. So there's a slight sort of shift in the orientation of our relations. And I found by kind of repeating this process, um, firstly uh, over that first day, but then subsequent days, that I began to kind of relate to the city in quite a different way. It, was, it wasn't that I was oriented by, um, you know, having to go to, a, to the next tourist destination. It was how, where and how I could keep this process going and, and kind of wayfare my way through the city. Anyway, um, uh, the next <laughs> iteration of that was um, I worked out that if I, if I, I, I put my strap on selfie stick, if I, I had this setup where I put a selfie stick so it projects out here and then I can set my phone and uh, do a hands-free version of um, my shadow wears. And I did that out on the Ring Road uh, Trail uh, that is sort of on the outer suburbs of Melbourne, sort of in, a, in an attempt to sort of circ circumnavigate, but also to kind of lose myself and um, find, uh, find a, the process or an interest in the process again. And uh, so with this, I kind of, was imagining that um, my shadows could eventually kind of connect with each other and um, in the mailbox art space I um, which is a, a it's an, an artist run space in, in the city it's just the, those um, wooden ma mailboxes in a foyer and I set the postcards on the top and I um, hosted some walks from from that venue and the kind of uh, the aim with those walks, I suppose, was to um, I call it to kind of reimagine the moment uh, right back at the very beginning, before even this thing we know of of jewelry, jewelry actually existed. And I called this a paleo fantasy that we would that in this walk we would go back and try and reimagine what that moment was like and kind of re reconfigure it through different values than perhaps how we configure the value of jewellery today. I know, it was, it was just, a, you know, it was just a kind of a speculative um, preoccupation and uh, my good friends came with me and we headed out on a walk and you can sort of see there's a pole that's got a spotlight on it and we headed down into this laneway which um, had scaffolding of it, over it and I kind of likened it to the Blombos Caves which is where some remnant traces of first jewellery has been um, discovered and, and now it's actually there's some conjecture around well, that was, it, um, was it Homo sapiens or was it uh, some of our forebearers that actually um, began this process of ornamentation. And so in the, in the cave, there's me with the pole and others sort of getting some stuff out ready to cast shadows and um, with ornaments on, on their shadows. And, and we kind of moved up the laneway once we exited the cave. We moved up and we used um, uh, um, artif existing artificial lights, so in foyers. I've got this a little bit out of order. We worked in foyers and in parking lots, trying to figure out if we could cast shadows using the existing lots, lights. And then we got to the climax of Flinders Lane Hill, where if the sun would show up and shine, mm -hmm. um, and that can be a problem with working with the elements, they don't always comply. 
but um, we would cast on the, on the streets as well. And so um, participants uh, posted <laughs> shadow ornaments um, online. And um, one of the things I was just going to hand around was that I also, I'm still interested in artefacts, but um, kind of activated them in different ways, I suppose. And so I made, um, in past those around, this little uh, fold out booklets to um, accompany the, uh, the shadow walk, oh, when I talk about the shadow walk. And you might notice that your gesture starts to kind of replicate the gesture that I'm doing through the unfolding. Ah, now we have a blank slide, and that's where you can kind of project your ideas about the jewellery onto it momentarily. Um, and just one quick final project. This was um, one I did last year where I, I speculated on a different educational model for jewellery. And in my model, uh, we set up a studio in a van and we had uh, on to the right, on your right, opposite to me, we had one novice ma maker and we were tasked with um, only teaching how to make one thing, which were earring wires, hooks or hoops. And we had uh, invitational VIP instructors come in and teach that one thing to the one student over and over and over again um, at different venues with the idea that um, during that process uh, the, instruct the verbal instructions, the verbs, the action verbs would be uh, called again and that we set up this kind of chorusing of uh, the verb, the verbalising of the making and um, transmitted that echo of the making through uh, a stenciled verb chain, which was what I was doing quite dedicatedly throughout the process. For each earring wire made, I scribed a verb chain. And then those verb chains were, um, were performed as, an, uh, as like a speech act by, um, uh, during, uh, during, I was doing my PhD at the time. This is why I was doing these crazy things. Um, in presentations, uh, I have the, the verb chains be kind of incant incantated, chanted by um, various kind of members of the audience. So you're quite lucky that you're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was interested in this idea that there, there are multiple ways to do one thing and that there are multiple ways to tell of how to do, how to, to do something. And so there's this kind of, uh, you know, there's this, always this difficulty as artists as, as to how we communicate what it is we know. And so I was sort of developing these different ways of registering, um, registering that through this kind of ornamental language and this kind of ornamental doing that, that was being done. And here's the making of the earring wires. And here are, here is our little um, mobile van. We, we were kind of parasitic. We were kind of outside a lot of different openings that were uh, on during um, kind of a, fe a festival of contemporary jewellery. And we kind of haul people in from, from inside the openings. So there you go. I think I've just done my 15 yeah. minutes. Um, I actually had one. Oh, good. Did you want to tell us about what you were working on while you were here doing oh, yes. your residency? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I've just done my residency here. And that was really interesting because I, uh, I just finished my PhD and uh, I, I was really interested in um, A, transitioning out of the PhD kind of mode and I was really interested in being in a space where there was making going on and to try and find connections between um, the, you know, the gestures or the, the, the practices of making and my own kind of practice of making. And to be honest, I really didn't quite know how I was going to do that. And um, then it just, 
I have a, I have a practice of kind of making do and a fairly kind of makeshift sort of practice. And um, I think I might have asked a few book questions here and there about what word would you add to the word make? <laughs> and um, started to make these words and they ended up um, as the, um, the, the weaver's armbands. And so each weaver um, got, got one letter of the, alphabet, of the word and, um, and together came to, to make, the, make up the words. That's a really very messy way of explaining it, but that's yes. about that what happened. Yeah. Yeah. It was lovely. Right? We have manual at each. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I was using, oh, so I was using the, the walls. I loved colour. The colour here, the colour, you know, that was sort of like candy to my eyes. It's not something that I'm, you know, I get it with, actually you do get it with plastic and I probably hadn't worked sort of directly with material for, um, for a little while. So it was just, it was quite, um, quite tantalising and delicious. And I look at that table and I just go, oh, which one, which one? <laughs> And, and then Pam, Pam, you were just delightful. <laughs> she was, you know, it was really, uh, it was quite a lovely process to be amongst um, all of you and, and the and the weavers in particular. Mm -hmm.